Stik som Elena är när Frans hade Jere så bara dank jag kan i de fördelliga manjerna ontvangen i namn för Jesus Kristus jere dank för för de fotstappar jere för att det var ja ni har väl gett av han jere om att komma in de akkuratheit jere från de boetskap jere att det är gott för dem borde alltid jere dank jag att de kan ontvang as as ja i borde jere in in det iets van i hart jere Prijs in naam dat ons vir Fransja mag het is in ons en ja, dat jy om opreg elke dag, heren, voor en toe vat en ja, jy bou monumenten, heren, dier die man in termen van wat jy graag in die wereld wil doen, heren, dat jy maak het vir anders zichtbaar, heren, en jy laat hulle onthou. Prijs in naam daarvoor. Dankie, Christian, nou, nou presje. Morgen jylle. Vir die mans wat snaaks na my hem, kyk, is die pinkie? Dis die salm. Is daar besoekers hier vir oogend vir die eerste keer? Behalwe vir Frans, en Frans, jy is baie welkom. Enige ander besoekers vir die eerste keer hier so? Wat is haar naam? Annabel, jy is baie welkom. En Frank, is lekker om vir jou vir oogend hier so te hee ook. Frank het een roadshow. Ons mis vir jou, en hy het so een klein bykie van een baami aami daar so achter saamgebring. Ek wil vir julle sê, dit is goed om nie te wees vir oogend. Ek wil vir julle sê, God, God sien jou. Ek wil vir julle sê, God sien jou, en hy is nie skam oor wat hy sien nie. Hy kyk na jou met een vaderhart, en nie met een kritiese sy hart nie. Die boodskap wat ek vir oogend bring, is in oogendlik in Engels met Laas, Sondag was vir ons tel in Afrikaans te wees, en toe swaai dit so. Ek vraag om verskoning daarvoor. But the message I have this morning is a good message. And I can boast in it because it's not my message. If it was my message, I don't have the charisma or the intellect to try and sell it to you, to get you worked up, to do something about it. And it is so dear, die intercessors, net in die laaste twee week is so, dat het uitgeming is, ek gloor werkelijk, waar is iets wat God wil sê vir ons nou. En I want to honor the intercessors. Hier so is mans en vrouwens wat elke week vir vijf dagen van die week bid vir sondag. En ek weet, hulle wil nie op, hulle wil nie het, dat is vir hulle vir hulle op te staan nie, want dit is nie wie hulle is nie. Maar ek wil vir hulle honor vir julle, vir julle harte. En as baie voorbereiding wat gedoen is, voor as vir oogend die so by mekaar kan kom. So, kan ons gauw kyk na die, dat is hy, oké. Dit was kom maar vir die bril wat elke nou en dan op en af gaan skuif, bid dat het nie een probleem sal wees nie. Ek wil net gebid, ek wil net sê, spirit, I just, ach spirit, flesh, flesh, I just command you in the name of Jesus to come in submission to Christ this morning. That nothing that is spoken this morning that you will, you will disrupt. And then I pray for for eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to comprehend what it is you want to say to us this morning. Amen. Ek het vir die heren gevra waarover moet ek praat vandag. En ek is redelijk een visuele ouds, so hy het vir my hierdie prentjie gegeen, baie duidelike prentjie, en ek sal het geteken het, maar ek kan nie teken nie. Morgen Niels, hy is ooral, so ek groet my in elk geval vir hom. Ehm, Ek het die prentje gekry van die kerk en van die stroom wat in die kerk by die voordeur inloop. Ok, ek in Engels praat, sorry. And the little streams trickling out by the exit. So there was a stream coming into this church and there was little bits trickling out to the world outside. And what God just said to me about that picture, God will only pour enough into the church as we are willing to pour out. If God had to come in his full potential and full might and power and pour, him, pour himself into the church, into more than what we can um, take in, uh, the church will look like something like this. And I, and I can guarantee you there will be casualties. If we are not ready for the fullness of Christ, if we are not thirsty and hungry for it, God's presence um, more than what we can take will be dangerous for us. 
Um, Okay. I, b I believe with this picture, there's this wonderful invitation uh, for us as a, as a church, as a house this morning, to receive more of the fullness of Christ, this river flowing into the church, but also to partake in taking this living water to the people outside people that are hungry and desperate. Part of this picture also was that the, the, the people in the church were healthy. But if, if you look outside the church, the people were, were, were malnourished. The world outside is spiritually malnourished and hungry and hurting. And they are desperate for, for that. And I believe you're here this morning. I think every single one of us are here this morning because we want more of Christ in this place. So, the message is a simple one. I'm going to break it up into three parts. Um, first part is being able to empty yourself. Because if we are as vessels, I wanted to bring a big vase and put it on here, but then I think Mike would start doing all his Ikebana designs in here and he wouldn't focus on the, the, on the message. I thought I'll just start to like Mike. You, it's up to you to finish it. Um, so we need to empty ourselves as, as vessels so that we can receive Christ. So the first one is empty yourself. The second one is to be filled with this living water. And the final one is to pour ourselves out. Um, the, the next verse. Okay, you can see Okay. It's Philippians 2 verse, verses 5 to 7. I just want to highlight the specific verse that says that Jesus emptied himself, taking on the form of a bond servant. And some translation says he humbled himself and also said he became, he became vulnerable. We too need to empty ourselves out so that we can receive the fullness of Christ that's available for each and every one of us. Um, Charles Spurgeon never minced these words, and he said the following. He said, a full Christ is only available for empty sinners and empty sinners alone. Emptiness is not the problem. Being full of the wrong stuff can stop the grace of Christ to flow in our lives. If you can just have a look at the next verse in 2 Kings. I'll just read from you. This is a story that I'm going to come back to a couple of times, but it just symbolizes what I'm trying to establish here. And this is Elijah, Elisha speaking to um, uh, Vierivir. Um, she, she, widower. No, is it widower? A widow. Speaking to a widow that's lost everything. And she had nothing left. And, and she just had a little bit of oil. Good example, maybe that bit of oil left. And he said to her, go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour the oil into these um, vessels. The, the important thing here is the vessels have to be empty. In order for God to do something in our lives, to pour himself in, we have to be empty. Sometimes we are full of ourselves, and I don't mean that in, a, in an insulting way, but sometimes we are so full of ourselves and so strong in ourselves that we struggle to make any sense of what God is wanting to do. Um, so the challenge is for us to yield to him. So the question is, what, what do we empty out? I think there's so much that we can empty out. Pride. Fear. I think even our, even our strengths, even past, past um, uh, what's the right word? Past, even past victories. All, all, the, all the, the trophies we have in our cupboard, we need to pack that away. 
because it makes us it makes us lazy you know, it not makes us doesn't make us want more from Christ so the question this morning with emptying that you need to ask yourself is what do I need to let go this morning for Christ to fill me I, I just want to go back just a step um, the table is, is set. Christ has set a meal for us. It's up to you this morning to be present and to come and join him at the table. Um, if we don't participate yet, it's just going to be another, another story that I told. And, and nobody is going to move away change. So I, I really want to challenge you this morning um, to come and participate in this meal that God has for us. Um, Yeah. The difference between a, a spiritual man and a, and a worldly man is what eventually, what, what does he yield to? As simple as that. Um, but the, but I don't know why I'm mentioning this, but it's imp- I'm going to mention it in any case, and please, Dion and Salma, swap me out if I'm wrong, but if you think a healthy marriage is where everybody does what you want them to do, um, you are completely wrong. A healthy marriage is where you yield to one another. If everybody does that, you, what you ask them to do, it's just a salt and battery. It's, that's, that's what it is. A good example of yielding. How do we yield um, to Christ? You often see these um, news clips of storms, tropical storms they have in America. And um, the first tree that, that blows over is a good old oak. It stands up, nothing is going to sway him. It it, it symbolizes pride sometimes for us. He will not move in any way. The the oaks, the old oaks are the ones that blow over first. Which which trees always survive? It's the um, palm trees. Because they yield to whatever comes at them. Um, If we get into situations... We need to yield to Christ. We need to say to Christ, remove this fear that's in you right now. Fill it with your love. Fill it with your your compassion and the security that I can only find from you. So yieldedness is is, is incredibly important in this process. Um, And then the, you know, what God really said to me about, even, even about this morning's message, are you willing to let Christ affect you. If we, if we don't allow Christ to affect us with this morning's message, um, you, you're wasting your time and I'm, I'm wasting my time. Allow Christ to affect us. Um, we often think that, this is probably more, this, this is me, the, you think that if you're in the a dangerous, the most dangerous situation is to be in the presence of, of evil. I'm saying no. The most dangerous situation to be then is in the, is in the presence of me. Why, why do I say that? Um, I think Marie, Mariette also alluded to it when she spoke, is that every single time, the, devil's, the devil would bring stuff at us. But it's me that decides what I do with it. It's me that decides, do I allow the enemy to pour, pour himself into me? Or do I remain filled with Christ? And I think the poor devil gets blamed for so much stuff that, that he didn't do. Or is it the case, as it for us come, what is daarmee gaan, what is daarmee gaan doen? Okay. The, back to the story of the, the widow. The widow had lost everything. Uh, she and her sons were in the process of being taken into slavery uh, to settle the debt uh, that they were owing. That situation uh, had completely emptied her out. She had, she had nothing. She didn't even have pride left in her life. But if you read the whole story, it was exactly that emptiness that allowed God to come and work miraculously in her life. John the Baptist made the same statement in John 3.30, where he said, 
there should be more of Christ in me and less, and less of me. More of Christ and, and less, less of me. The, ch- the thing here is we need to empty ourselves. The challenge is it's, nobody can empty you for you. You need to empty yourself before Christ in order to be filled with his life and his promises and his identity. We need to let go of all the other stuff that we've, we've placed within our hearts. And how do we do that? <laughs> I'm just a practical person. If you've, and what I'm saying is you go, you go to God. I think even while we're speaking, the Holy Spirit will tell us. I think we're fully aware of what, what the blockages are um, that's preventing Christ from pouring himself into, into me. Every Sunday you have the opportunity to come forward. Mention to God what the blockages are. You know it, he know it, he knows it. And then physically hand it over to God and ask God to, uh, to remove it. And then, at least for the first couple of weeks, you need to cling on to him as tightly as you, possible, as, as you possibly can because the devil doesn't like losing and he will come and he will knock at your door all the time. All the time. Hold on to Christ. Avoid the lifestyle that you've lived before that's got you into the situation. So, stupid example, if you like sweets, don't walk past baking shops. Fill your mind with, with stuff that honors God and that allows space for him. I think there, there are so many signs this, in, in this church right now that you can start seeing that God is busy emptying people out and people are starting to change. Um, I, I just look at the, the youth. I don't know if, you, if you've seen the young adults lately. And I want to commend Cheslin and Tony for, and for the jeugdwerke wat binnenkort sy handen vol gaan he. But for, the, for what, what they have done to channel, to channel what God is busy releasing in these young guys, you can see there's, the, the things, are in, things are on the increase. So God is busy doing stuff. We need to just be able to identify it. This emptying out is not a single, it's not a single um, incident. It happens, and it needs to happen all the time. Even while I, was, while I was preparing for this, God told me that I need to empty myself out of, uh, of, of self-righteousness, and I was, I was shocked. But when I sat with him, I realized there's a lot of self-righteousness in, in me that I need to enter, uh, get rid of. And I, and I, and I apologize if in, if in any way I've passed that on to any of you. But if you sit, at God, if you sit, sit with God, and he will, he will show things that we need to get rid of. So we need to empty out all the time. Everybody un- understands the first, the first one? Okay. The second one is being filled um, with the Holy Spirit. You are here because you want more, and I've mentioned that before. Um, I can see the hunger in people. I can see the way people serve. I can see that people want more from God. So we are, we are in a good place for this to happen. Back to the lady with, a, with a, the vessels. Um, in a kind of faith that, that only desperation uh, brings, she went and she gathered absolutely as much or as many vessels as she possibly could for this oil to be poured into it, and she took the oil and she trusted God to do the filling. You see, the only thing that limits us when it comes to filling is the amount of space that we want to create for Him. The only thing that limited the miracle for this lady was the amount of empty vessels that she could gather. If you understand the Father's heart, you understand who He is you would run and get as much as you possibly can. And the, 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 whatever, what we learn from the story is when, when we are g- gathered in faith and ready to receive, we will see God move among us like he did with this, with this widow. Can we have a look at the next, next verse? Okay. It is John seven thirty seven. Here's an invitation. 
And that's what I said this morning's, this morning's message is, is a powerful invitation to us. And it says, on the day of the last, on the last day of the feast, I think it was the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Powerful invitation. It's yours if you want to take it. But your stomach needs to be empty for you to be hungry. And as a vessel, you need to be empty to become thirsty. The important thing here is God will never force the amount of drinking on you. God's not going to stand here and, and tip himself on you. If you were in, in charismatic churches in the 80s, I sometimes felt like the guys here with a fire hydrant starting to shove it down your throat. And we've done some, we've done some harm and we've, we've scared people off with that. That's not the way it works. God says, come and drink. Come and partake. Drink as much as you want to. Drink the vessel. Drink a medium size or drink a cup. But then, let's pray for God to increase sense of desperation and thirst within us for more of him. Because there is more of him. The next um, verse is John 4.14. So, and that's the promise. So there's, there's an invitation and then there's a promise if we accept this. It says, but if anyone drinks the living water that I give them, they will never thirst again and will be forever satisfied. For when you drink the water I give you, it will become a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, springing up and flooding you with endless life. The important thing there is drinks. It's, once again, it's not a single, it's not a single incident. It's, it's something that we need to do continuously. So every morning when you come before God and you spend time with Him and you invite Him in, He fills you. And your thirst, you, you, as, you, as you pour yourself out, that thirst will always be there. So remember that the infilling is not a single incident. Too many people have, not too many people, it's, it's just wrong, but, but often we, we think that if I was filled uh, two, or, what, two or three weeks ago, that's enough for now, it'll last. I'll make sure it lasts. It's not supposed to be like that. Living water is supposed to be available to us every single day for that day. God pours himself into us for today. And then there's just a bit of a caution um, in this process of, of the infilling. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. It's, um, it's not on the slide. It's in Jeremiah 2, verse 12 to 13. And it says, Stand in shock. Heavens at what you see. Throw up your hands in disbelief. This can't be God's decree. My people have committed a compound sin. They've walked out on me, the fountain of flesh flowing water, and they've dug cisterns, cisterns that leak, and cisterns that are no better than sieves. Can I try to the opposite from a cistern? So it's an amal casino like it. So this is a gat, yeah, it's a gat for mensen graven. Um, water in a cistern becomes stagnant, it's stale and, and, and tasteless, and it symbolizes people that, that um, form their own religion to, to suit them. So what they do is they take from God and they, they bottle it and they, and they put a lid on it and, it, and they use it as, as they feel comfortable with it. The problem is that water eventually becomes undrinkable. They, they feel comfortable that it'll give them life, but it never does. Um, only living water will quench your thirst. Daily drinking of, of the living water. And it's almost, the Bible talks about having a form of godliness, but not, not having any power. So we need to realize that we, we need to trust God as our Heavenly Father and trust what He gives us in, is enough for today. Um, we are supposed to be conduits of, of this flow of Christ. Conduit is a four. So we're supposed to be receiving and letting it flow 
flow out from us, taking as much as we want and then passing, passing on to the people that are desperate for that. Um, now, this is just me, but I, I think I actually realized when I read this is that Tupperware had its origins in the desert uh, with the Israelites. I think that's where it started. Um, and the reason, the reason for that, same thing. You just passed through the Red Sea. They were in the, in the desert. The first thing they said, but we don't have food. They don't trust God to give them food. God brought them manna, and it was good for a day or two. And then they designed the Tupperware. And they packed their Tupperwares full of manna. The problem with that is, even with Tupperware's wonderful sales pitch, the manna went frot. Manna was designed to be eaten on the day. Not, there could be many reasons why they put it in the Tupperware. One could be that they didn't trust that there would be food again the next day. The other one is maybe they wanted to watch Egyptian chariot racing the next morning on, on the cable, and they wanted to eat later. So they wanted just a thing to work, work, work around them so they can maybe just rest, rest a bit. Manna is like living water. It was designed for today to eat now to strengthen you so that you can carry on and do the work of Christ. Carry on following him into the plans and purposes that he has for you. So in many ways, the Tupperware is like, like a cistern. It'll never fill us um, it'll never uh, saturate us like living water does. And, 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 and this points to, some of it points to an orphan spirit. Or They say you, you can take the slave out of Egypt, but you can't take the Egypt out of the slave, something like that. But um, I believe that some of them had an orphan spirit. They didn't understand the Father's heart for them. They didn't understand that my dad will, will keep on, on giving so if you're an orphan, you'll take whatever you have that's in front of you and you'll leave no, nothing for everybody else and you'll hold on to that because I've got to look out for myself. We need to be aware. We need to check our hearts. We are children of, of the Most High, children of the living God, and we qualify for all the benefits. We qualify for everything that He has for us. And that's something that will be filled and given to us on, on a daily basis. The, the end of a cistern, when it eventually breaks or it's broke or it, it leaks is they would bury people in it. The owner, the owner often gets buried in his own cistern, which just once again, once again highlights that it's not what God had planned for us. Fresh water is supposed to bring life, but I believe there's lots of us this morning here that have had dreams that that have been crushed, dreams that we, we packed into a system or packed away because we thought we didn't deserve it, we thought it was too, too big for us, or whatever that is. I want, I want to tell you this morning to go and revisit those dreams, go and revisit the prophecies that have been spoken over you. Allow the fresh water of Christ to flow over you and rejuvenate those promises. Those promises have not changed. If you feel you're sitting here this morning and you just feel, I, I, there's nothing here for me. Just go back to the last time that you, you heard God clearly speak into your life. Um, yeah, our identity in, is in Christ and in what Christ did for us. It has absolutely nothing to do with me. So don't allow the enemy to ever tell you that you're not good enough to come and take a drink. Don't allow those, those lies to, to enter you at all. It's because of what Christ did in you that qualifies you to come and drink as much as you can. And the reality is the way we react to this invitation to come and drink will even, either enhance our future or it'll place our future in jeopardy. If you want a better future, I, I urge you to, to take on this invitation um, and come and drink. And then the, the, the thing that I just mentioned earlier, what the, what the enemy would often do in the Old Testament when they would come and conquer a region, the first thing they would do 
is they would take rocks and stones and they would block up all the wells that, that people have dug for themselves and for, for the animals so that they cannot drink from it. Don't allow little lies to come and enter about your identity in Christ that would cause the enemy to come and block this well that God says, if we accept it, this well will burst forth from inside of us. Don't allow the enemy to block this well that God has released in you. If we just... Okay, let, that, that's fine. That's the... Sorry, I'm running ahead of myself. The next and the last part is that we need to pour ourselves out. Because if we just receive from Christ and we just come forward every, every whenever and we receive from Christ and we don't pour it out, we become consumers of Christ. But if we pour ourselves out, that's when we become co-laborers in Christ and we work with Christ. That's the intention of this living water for us to go um, and pour it out on others. Rick Warren said if if God, only, if God had to wait for perfect people to start doing the work, we'd wait forever. Come as you are and start pouring yourself out. Don't ever minimize your effort of pouring yourself out. Don't, we can't all be, um, what's that dude with the dreadlocks? Todd White. Todd, I've got the surname, not the name. We can't all be Todd Whites. We weren't all called to be Todd Whites. Um, a couple of years ago, Saki did a, uh, a day's training with us, and then he sent us out with the money that we were supposed to pay for, for lunch to go bless people with it. Um, and Jillian, Jillian's testimony of she just bought somebody an iron. But what really so stood out is um, Don's son, Donny, bought um, a pack of those chocolate balls with the nuts. The ladies know the name. I'm sure they do. That's a Ferrero Rocher. He bought chocolates, and all he did is he walked from person to person, and he offered them a chocolate. And, and, the, and, and you, the expression on people's faces is, why do you want to give me a chocolate? And he just said, our church is just wanting, to, just wanting to bless you. A simple act that we never, ever discard the effect that it can have in somebody's life, that just needed, needed to sense God's love, needed to sense that somebody cares for them. So whether you bake a milk tart for your neighbor Invite somebody over for a braai. Help somebody with a car. Mow an old lady's lawn. Go and walk in the streets. Um, don't ever minimize the effect that, that that has on you. Be yourself. Be authentic. Don't be anybody else. Um, be what God has, has made you to be. Um, okay, the next um, verse and this one excites me. This one really excites me. It's 2 Timothy 4, verses 6. Um, Paul was a wonderful example of pouring his life out. I think you can all agree from where he was to pouring his life out for the church and for the unsaved people and what he had to, uh, what he had to work with during that time. Paul says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. That's the important thing here. Uh, he, he likens pouring out to a drink offering. And then I went to find out what exactly was a drink offering. And a drink offering in, in the Old Testament was once they've sacrificed a lamb on the altar, they would come and they would pour wine around it. It was a way of worship. And it was a way of dedicating themselves. It's a symbol of dedicating themselves to worship God. So, pouring ourselves out is not a works thing. Uh, there are a certain group of people that walk around with light, lighthouse or light tower magazines that are so stuck in works because if they get so many votes, they can get closer to Christ. It's not a works thing. It's a worship thing. And I'm telling you this morning, this is a house of worship. Everybody that comes here says it that the worship truly touches them. So this is a house that understands worship. And you just need to go and visit another house to understand what, what special times we have here. And, and that's not in a judgmental way at all. 
So this is an invitation with a pouring out. To just take your worship that you're doing inside you and take it outside. That's all that God's saying is, take your worship for me, take it outside, go and pour yourself out to me as a drink offering for the people that are desperate for it. Because as we increase our pouring out, God will come with that stream and he will match what we pour out. And you will see that this place will change. You will see um, the power of God being manifest in this place. And we will experience revival like never before. I believe that it is, I'm of the opinion, so that's when you fought it, have lost it. I'm, uh, I'm of the opinion that once the church starts pouring itself out to the lost and to the hungry and to the dry and to the broken, like Jesus did, the church's status will change from survival to revival. And I ask you, did you test me in that? God will match whatever we pour out with more of his presence flowing into this place. Um, I also just said we can quicken the flow of the spirit if we just yield to it. So you go out and you ask God, where can I pour myself out? It's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's a mindset. Where can I pour myself out? People are tired of people pouring themselves out with a, with a camera on Facebook and say, look, I've just helped this guy. And us Afrikaners het ook al daarmee geval. Ek het ander een gesien van een van Afrikaans, hy is vir jou sak groceries van hierdie ding. And they put it on Facebook so that everybody can see it. People are tired of that. Um, you're not, you're recognizing yourself. And you're idolizing yourself. You're not giving, you giving to yourself. People want to see honest pouring out of people from a heart of love for the people in this town. And then I'm the Boeing come land makers claw. Um, just a challenge. Uh, there's this whole thing you say, it is too much to oofen. Okay? We've all, we all been there. Where the, the, the contrary is true that you actually need to oofen to get rid of your mukhat. So you need to exercise to get the energy to oofen. So you actually need to start and do something to, to get rid of this. Um, some of you this morning might just feel spiritually exhausted. Just spiritually exhausted. You, you, you are just tired. And I want to challenge you this morning. Go out this week. Go out this afternoon. And go and pour yourself out to somebody. And I'll give you a 100% guarantee on that. That Christ will come and he will renew you. He will fill you with fresh living water. Um, so I know that it's been a tough year. I know that we've all had a lot of challenges. But I ask you to um, consider this perfect flow um, that, that was started with in becoming conduits for Christ. Because not only will you be renewed, but people outside of us will receive what they so desperately are hungry and thirsty for. Okay. Dis klaar. Net, dit gaan die laaste die laaste prentkie. Okay. As jylle kan sien, dit is die ge, gebreekte broken vessel. I really believe there's somebody, there, there are people here this morning that, that are looking like that. And no matter what you pour into yourself, it just seeps out. Um, and I believe this morning God says, bring it back to the potter. He wants to put you together again so that you can experience that fullness. So there's an, in, there's an invite for that. Um, if you feel that you are you, like a smashed vessel, don't go this morning until you've come to the potter and given yourself over in his hands to, to fix you. And I ask that if there's anybody, uh, Jolene, will you need to upstand? I want you to, to go to her and ask her to pray for you. As a belief. And then I'm going to close off, but as I said before, 
Don't leave you, leave you until, this has, until God's word has affected you. So if you're sitting here this morning with your Tupperware, just put it under your chair. We can't see it. God wants to pour fresh into you. So if you're brave enough, I want you to come, come to the front afterwards. If you feel you need to empty yourself out, come forward. This is a safe place. Um, so if anything, if anything, the Holy Spirit has highlighted anything about what God's word said this morning, and you, and you need some prayer, please don't leave here until you've dealt with it. Yeah. Can I just pray quickly? I can hear him. 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 Gesels met my oor goed, en, en hy sê, ek sal kom soos hier reen, en, en terwijl het bezig is om na my toe te kom, denk ek, ah, dit is volgende zondagse boodskap. <laughs> en hy sê, god, nee, hy het, luister vir Frans, wat is hierdie week, sy boodskap. <laughs> so, so, ek wil hy, as my net gaan, staan gaan saam met, saam, um, Frans, wat gaan nou bid vir julle, um, maar ek wil hy, as my net gaan reageer op dit, Jesus, wat ek, wat ek God oor sê, ek sê, ek gaan kom soos hier reen, en julle gaan vloe soos strome, maar jylle is bang vir waar jy in jylle op pad is, jylle is bang vir dit waar in jylle gaan invloei, vir die, vir die, vir die buigbaarheid om enige vorm aan te neem, want jy weet nie wat voor jou is nie, en, en wanneer die Heere kom om ons te gebruik, is dit precies wat hy voor gaan vraag, dit wat Frans van oor gesels het, wat ook al so hard geraak het, dat het nie meer kan buig nie, dit sal kraak en breek, en wat die Heere voor vraag is, gaan jy my vertrouw, is jy buigsam in dit wat ek gaan, wat ek gaan doen, het jy, het jy, kan jy rek, kan jy meegee, kan jy, die, kan jy opvol tot kapasiteit, soos dat, want daar is baie waar het vandaan kom, so typisch wat, wat hier gebeur is, gewoonlik, die, die trots en die hardkoppigheid, en die type goed staan in die pad, is iets wat jy vir jouself sê, ek gaan dit gaan vir die huis gaan uitsorteer, ek sien het, maar ek gaan het by die huis gaan uitsorteer, jy sal bezig om het by die huis uit te sorteer, vir 15 en 20 jaar, dus jy kom het like soos wat het like, so, as jy vandag die stem van God hoor, wat dit betref, dan, jy is welkom, dan kom, want, want hy weet precies wat daarmee moet gebeur, hy het die medicijne daarvoor, hy het die kracht daarvoor, dit is iets waar jy jou gaan uittel, die hele ding gaan oor, die vertrouwen van verhouding, dat jy nie bang is om in Godse hande te val vir dit nie. En as al enig iets wat jy vreugde stel, is in die area. Enig iets wat jy stadiger maak, enig iets wat jy stop. Enig iets wat maak dat jy voel jy is minder, of jy is nie genoeg nie. Dan sit betek keer die, die harde beperkings wat jy wil inslaan om te sê, jy kan nie gaan in die onzekerheid in nie. Het gaan nie oor wat jy gaan ontmoet daar nie, het gaan oor wie jy gaan ontmoet daar. Dan wil God vir ochend jou op so'n manier ontmoet, dat jy weet, dat jy val in sy hande, jy is welkom, en jy is veilig, so as dit met jou praat, ons gaan nie voorwees, Frans, jy gaan nou bid, dan kom, kom doen bezigheid met God, kom gesels met hom, jy gaan mense wees wat saam met jylle bid. Ja, jy, my gebed is net vir ochend, dat jy net weer ons identiteit, as die kinders, kom herstel, Ek bid dat ons nie so wegstap, dat ons sal verstaan, dat ons nie hoef enig iets te bedel nie. Maar alles wat in die koninkrijk beskikbaar is, is vir oogend tot ons beskikbaar. En ek vraag jyre dat ons ons self sal uitgiet vir u, vir die wereld wat het nodig het. Bid vir die week wat voorleer, dat ons sal vastklauw aan die beloftes, dat ons sal vastklauw in wat u vir ons het, en dat ons tyd sal maak, dat u self in ons leven kan giet. Amen.